Why in the world would you think about putting a Section 8 tenant in a $300,000 house? Let's discuss. All right, y'all. So this cat watched one of my videos. Uh, his name is uh, Yapalto, okay? Drops a comment. Why is them destroying your $300 $300,000 house, not a bigger risk than them not paying rent for a couple months. I'm tripping over my words. Let me try that again. Why is them destroying your $300,000 house, not a bigger risk than them not paying rent for a couple months, okay? This dude, Yapalto, he uh, posted that comment on like a, one of the Holton Weiss TV Instagram reels, okay? And essentially... What that video was is that was a video where I was talking uh, about why Section 8 tenants are better than cash-paying tenants in certain situations. And this dude right here, he totally missed the complete point of the video. He is not anywhere near uh, the landing zone on the message in that video. So we're going to have to break that down. We're going to have to discuss it, okay? Because for the record, to be clear, you should never, and I would never, consider putting a Section 8 tenant in a $300,000 house. That would be a terrible idea, okay? There's a lot of uh, intricacies and nuance to this message, right? You have a lot of landlords out there, a lot of investors out there, that they are under the impression that they go, Section 8 tenants are the worst tenants. They're terrible, okay? Yes and no, okay? Yes and no. Terrible compared to what, okay? In the scenario where you have a $300,000 rental property, folks, in that scenario, if the house itself is worth three hundred k. That house is in an area, a neighborhood, a place where the median income and the values are high enough to where, yes, you are correct. A Section 8 tenant would probably be one of the worst types of tenants you could place in that home, right? In an area where you have a $300,000 house, folks, you're going to attract a tenant base that has got way better credit than Section 8 tenants, that is way more responsible than Section 8 tenants, that makes money that will pay their bills, right? Obviously, you can't eliminate all bad actors, but you mitigate your risks. And a $300,000 property is going to attract enough quality tenants who represent a low enough risk factor to landlords to where, yes, in that scenario – Putting a Section 8 tenant in it would be a bad idea. Now, in the video that he was replying to, I was discussing how when you have a property in the ghetto, when you have the property uh, in a super low-income neighborhood, when you have a property of very low value, your Section 8 tenants... It flips. They are now the least risky tenants. They are now your best tenants, right? Because here's the deal. Yes, it is true. Section 8 tenants do a ton of damage to properties on average, right? So if you go back to that $300,000 house, a Section 8 tenant would be much more likely to fuck your house up than one of those other tenants who have job history, Decent credit reports. They're, by and large, responsible people, whereas Section 8 tenants are, by and large, irresponsible people. I know we're going to get the haters in the comments like, how could you say that about Section 8 tenants? That is so offensive. Bro, it's just fact, okay? Grass is green, water's red. If you are not responsible enough to pay for the own roof over your head and you need the government to pay for you to live, you are, are by definition, irresponsible. It is what it is. Cry about it if you want. I don't give a crap. But, but moving over here, right? So that's the $300,000 house that this dude's commenting about, right? Yeah, he's right. Terrible idea. Never do that. But back to the low-income neighborhood, the tough neighborhood. When you have neighborhoods where those people that would live in your $300,000 house, the people with good credit, good job history, 
pay their bills, don't screw the house up very often. Those people, folks, you don't have the opportunity to rent your low-income houses to them. Those types of people are not moving in to the cheapest neighborhoods in a major demographic area, right? And it doesn't matter where, right? We could be talking about freaking Detroit. We could be talking about Memphis. We could talk about Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Toledo, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, Baltimore. It doesn't matter, okay? Every one of those cities, folks, right? They have neighborhoods where all the poor people have to live. They have neighborhoods where you're sex offenders, you're felons, right? In any major city, metropolitan area, okay, there are people that got out of jail. There are people that are on the sex offender registry. There are people that have been evicted multiple times. These human beings exist, and they have to live somewhere. Where do you think they live? They live in the area with the cheapest houses, okay? That's just how the cookie crumbles, right? So when you have a house like that, your Section 8 tenants pose the least amount of risk because the entire pool of tenants is by and large much more risky to the landlord, okay? The majority of these people are unsavory and the majority of them are going to screw the house up anyway. But with the Section 8 tenants, who are also typically very irresponsible, of course, those folks have their rent paid for by the government. So you have the same risk factors, except for these specific folks, the Section 8 folks, they have a major risk factor removed from the equation, which is them not paying the rent. Because when you're in a very rough neighborhood, you're in the ghetto, you're in the area where all the criminals and the sex offenders, where the majority of them, where there is more criminals, sex offenders, drug dealers, gang members, hookers, junkies, when there is more of them per capita in a particular neighborhood, y'all, that's a neighborhood where collecting the rent is incredibly difficult. Section 8 tenants make that less difficult, right? So this guy, he was just confused. Yes, brother, you're right. It wouldn't make sense in a $300,000 house where you could attract quality tenants who could one day choose not to pay. It wouldn't make sense to slap a Section 8 tenant in there uh, to alleviate the risk of those high-quality tenants not paying rent because the Section 8 tenant would do a ton more damage, 100%. But that, you missed the message, dog. You missed the boat. I was talking about the hood, the ghetto, rough neighborhoods, high-crime neighborhoods, areas with a lot of blight. In those areas, your Section 8 tenants... They reduce your risk, folks, because if we're out there renting our properties and people ain't paying us, not only are we losing rent, that just opens us up to a ton of other major issues with our properties, right? As soon as they don't pay rent for a few months, you got to spend all that money evicting them. Then you kick them out of your house. Now your house is empty. This is a high crime area. High crime areas have a ton of people that break into your house. They steal your copper plumbing. They, you know, they, they scrap it. They take it to the local scrapyard and get money for fentanyl. They steal your furnaces. They steal your hot water tanks. Anything of value. I've had houses and ghettos so fucking blighted that they have literally stolen the aluminum siding off the house. They have stolen the gutters, okay? So a vacancy in, the, in those type of properties, it's not just losing rent and paying for the eviction. It's all the money you have to pay when criminals break into your house because your house is now a target. Then you have to pay to renovate it, put a new tenant in, and then if that tenant doesn't pay, you got to start the whole process over. That's why in those neighborhoods where the risk levels are so high, we put in the least risky tenant, which is a Section 8 tenant. And that's always the goal of a landlord. You can never eliminate risk. You just mitigate it enough. So when you're doing your tenant screening at any property, your goal should always be to figure out what tenant has the highest probability of making you money and put them in your house and what tenant has the lowest probability of making you money, highest probability of costing you money, and keep them out of your house. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.